What's going on? Y'all don't play about that green leaf, do it. Y'all do not play about that green leaf, baby. Oh, B. I'm glad y'all like my green leaf reviews. Uh, cause baby, y'all don't play no games. Y'all was like, bitch, well, uh, okay, this is cute. But, uh, I'ma need my green leaf. And, and, and because I work for the people, my love things. Here, bitch is. Here she is. I'm sorry, y'all. I, I had a little delay. Uh, if y'all haven't, go over to J. Real Hunt. Uh, channel. I'm going to link the video below, but we did a collaboration video on um, the have and have nots. I mean, y'all probably seen a hundred of them, so still go over there and check it out. And if y'all ain't subscribed to him, please do subscribe to him. He very entertaining. You just have to stick with him, honey. Just sit over there and listen to what he say, because he one of them he one of them slick readers. He been and got you and you ain't even know it, baby. He reads out the book of Phaedra Park. I love it, too. But, uh, yeah, we did a collab video, and I, I want to extend a thank you to him for uh, contacting me about doing the collaboration. It was fun to do. Um, I appreciate him willing to work with me because, child, y'all know I'm still kind of like just not getting, you know, back in good with the YouTuber thing following the scandal and I just appreciate the support I appreciate him still loving his auntie Nika and I appreciate all of you who stick around and, and, and deal with my crazy ass sometimes sometimes time chat but here we go we're gonna talk about this green leaf this is season one episode eight the whole book I think that's what it would call a whole book. I check it'll be in the description box. Y'all know I'm gonna get it together. Now this episode started off with Noah and Isabella, uh, basically talking about wedding plans and things like that. When old Gigi walk in, now Isabella want to know if uh, Gigi, who Gigi plus one gonna be at their wedding? You know, because she already worried, and and she got reason to be. As we further get into this review, you gonna see why she needed to have been worried. Child, never underestimate your opponent. Okay, um, she fishing. Like I said, and Gigi tell him, nah, girl, ain't no special nobody in my life. It's going to be just me and old soul. We're going to roll on down up in there. Just me and soul, okay? Isabella uh, fishing because she know that Gigi a threat to her uh, possible impact. So she asking them special questions to find out. Well, Isabella excuses herself, and Gigi asks uh, Noah, is there a way that they could, that he could help her be able to hack into Uncle Creepy Mac's computer? Uh, and he said, yeah, all he got to do is tell the secretary that he updating some software, go in, get that information, put it on the zip file, and out of there, 10 minutes tops, child. So she asked him, will he do it? And of course he going to do it because that's for Gigi, honey. Uh, as my friends, my fam over there at Random TV Reviews say, Pastor Grace, because we're going to put some respect on her name. Okay. Now, next scene takes us to Isabella outside of the, you know, they outside of the, of the plant, on the plantation. Lady uh, May is walking around showing him her, you know, the plan she got for the wedding. What this is going to be. I'm going to put some cherry trees here. And we're going to do this there. But see, Isabella a little bit disturbed in her spirit. Because I told you she concerned about her opponent uh, slash daughter of, of Lady May. So she get to asking him, you know, do, do you think that Noah really is in love with me? Lady May like, yeah, God, of course he loves you. Well, do you think that it's completely over between him and, you know, because I'm kind of concerned about how he may be still feeling about Gigi, Lady May. What, ch dear, what Gigi and Noah had was over 20 years ago. He would be a fool to not be proud to have someone like you on, on his arms. You don't have to worry about anything. That was a long time ago. And he's not, you know, he's focused on his future now. And his future lies with you. She, sure, she trying to reassure that Noah uh, is hers and no need to worry. So she said that uh, even the bishop took her through some moments leading up to their wedding. They tend to get a little cold feet. But relax, it's going to be just fine, honey. It's going to be just fine. You know, they got a great future together. That's what she told that girl. 
child. Next, let's go over to the church because we see. I don't know if it was in the pastor's office or or in one of their sitting rooms or something, but it's Charity, Kevin, Gigi, Noah, Bishop, all of them watching the TV, and it's announced that there would be no grand jury indictment for Officer David Nelson in the shooting death of 16 year old Kenny Collins. Did we not just see that with Freddie Gray? Well, they decide that they, uh, you know, clearly it's not gonna be it's not gonna be well received by the citizens of that city because child they start doing back lives protests and they happen to turn their TV to a local channel where they see the pastor of Triumph Church, which is the church that's like kind of in competition with uh, Calvary, and. Uh, Basically, that pastor was saying that this man got away with murder with the backing of Calvary. Now, Bishop Daddy said, oh, really? Well, I guess it's time I pay him a visit. I said, all right, Pastor uh, 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 Bishop Daddy, go on over there and have a conversation with him. Looking like you, child, you, just, you said it like a gangster. What, what we going to get some? What we going to get, child? What we going to get? But anyway... Gigi gets on the phone and calls David to see how he doing and he's saying that he okay but he can't he still can't move around and do nothing it's like he free but he ain't free uh, because he still got people outside his hotel room talking about Black Lives Matter. So she puts it pop on over there to the uh, hotel to check on him. And he tells her that it's clear that the only way that he's going to have a semblance of a normal life is for him to move. And he's considering Delaware. That's a place where he can kind of blend in and no one knows his name or his face. And she trying to tell him that running away wouldn't necessarily help anything. She tried to use it try to use her life as an example saying that she ran away herself to uh, 20 years ago and now she's back so all roads lead to home but I have to disagree with you on this here Pastor Gigi because I'm going to put some respect on your name today uh, your situation is totally different from his you know it, you had issues within your family structure and it caused you to want to leave and and seek out you know a different life elsewhere whereas he is actually has accidentally killed this child and people ain't finna let him live like this so y'all situations ain't ain't the same trust me i get it people don't let shit go nor do they allow you to live peacefully after a controversy Trust me, I fucking know that. But if you strong, see a stronghold will survive. And he trying to be a stronghold. So he said he going to move to Delaware where he ain't got to, you know, deal with the day-to-day -day of these people in this city of Memphis weighing him down, okay? she, You could tell she didn't really want him to leave. I understand why she ain't want him to leave. Cause, okay, at first I felt like they had some type of attraction, but... What goes on later gonna make me think elsewhere. Uh, otherwise, <clears throat> okay. Bishop is having this interview with Greg. Remember Greg from wanting to have a threesome with um, um, Jacob and Carissa. Yeah, well, and he want you know that's the news dude trying to put uh Bishop back on TV. He agrees to a, a meeting with Greg and Jacob, and Bishop allowed old boy to pitch his ideas. All that old good stuff. Even down to talking about child. I ain't never think I could own. Or oh, I think he said a portion. Now he said he got three of them. Well, he listened to it and then he let him know, you know, politely, that he has no intentions on <laughs> being on TV. Old boy kept trying and went so far as to tell Bishop some mess about that's the audience that he wants to tag. He wants to, uh, you know, engage with because with that audience, that bigger audience comes more tithes and offerings to the church. Now Bishop insulted and tell him to get his ass on out of his office. He get ready to leave. Jacob talking about I'll you know I'll call you later to discuss you know further discuss this. And Bishop like what are we discussing? What you discussing? He was like, well, I was going to try to talk to you and see if I can, you know, convince you that this would be a good idea. He said, I've already told you what it's not going to happen. So Greg looked at him and said him, all right, this is the second strike. Remember the first strike is him and Clarissa backed out of having the, the little th uh, foursome or whatever the hell you want to cut the swinging situation. And now his daddy kicking him out the office. <coughs> so that's strike three for, oh, I mean strike two for, oh, uh, Bishop. 
So, old boy leaves out of there, and Bill, and, and Jacob started talking about, um, well, why did you even take the interview if you knew that that wasn't going to work? He said, because I was trying to give you a chance. I was trying to give you a chance. I thought maybe that you would realize that this was not no good idea, and you would let it go. Jacob, you just came. You weren't called, and your father sees that. He's not interested in, in having you in any part of this ministry because, as we learn later on, this is a business to them. Although he believes in God and I believe that he has been called according to his purpose, he still is a business, okay? Well, I guess Jacob going to be all right, child. Next, we see Noah going into that office to get that uh, information that he promised G.J. off of uh, old Uncle Matt's computer. And he takes it to her. And uh, she's saying thank you and what's not. And he gets to leaving. And here comes Lady Mae with it. And I'm like, girl, what you up to? You up to something. Well, she asking him, you know, remember when I had asked you to keep an eye on G.J.? He said, yes, ma'am. He said, she said, well, have you, you know, has she been doing anything? He said, no, ma'am. She said, well, you know, she was tied up with that David Nelson situation. And he said, I had no idea about that. Well, Lady May say, I know that look on your face. Uh, it's something you're not telling me. And I was so here. Noah, no, he know how to lie. Just like he lied to Uncle, uh, uh, Uncle Creepy Mac last week. I don't know what you're talking about. He hit her with that same thing. He said, the only thing on my mind is that... Uh, Isabella and I will be moving to Colorado right after the wedding, and she acted all happy and shit about it, but, uh, she don't, you know, she don't know what to take of this, all this mess here. Now, Gigi, Gigi looking at Uncle Mac info from that file, and apparently it's a particular date that has caught her interest. We find out that when you transfer information from your contacts to your email, sometimes some encrypted information could go over there with it, thus being what she's looking at right now. And um, she, you know, by look on her face, we know something ain't cool. She didn't. She didn't found something that she need to be able to further her cause of taking down her creepy ass uncle. Okay, so the next scene takes us to Bishop, uh, Daddy, and the pastor over at Triumph. And child, I didn't get that scene because it seemed like to me all they did was read each other biblically. Child, I I ain't never. I, I like the old good biblical read because that's what they was doing. One verse versus the other, you know what I'm saying? And basically, what we found out is, you know, it's this man at this church was glad that you know situations and things went on down at their church and they was able to get it resolved because they don't want he don't want them over there in their books because all of them cooking their books. Okay, that's what I got out of that. Well, the next thing takes us to Gigi going over to Danielle house and she not feeling seeing her. She said, "My mama ain't here." Well, Gigi want to talk to her, and she mentions, I know about Nashville. Baby, when she said she knew about Nashville, the she, that broke her. Broke her, baby. Just broke her completely down. She said, look, my mom got into some mess concerning some chicks. Ain't that some nigga shit? Fucking chicks. But, uh, Uncle Creepy Mac came to help her out. And considering she had no money for no attorney and he was doing such a good job, it was a blessing to her. And he just eventually started coming over, checking on us, making sure we was good. It went from that to him picking us up from school. And then he said he was going to teach me to fish. And that's how I wound up at that church camp doing, you know, for that fishing expedition. And Gigi said everything was fine. Well, he said, she said, Everything was fine. You know, I, I, I wasn't never going to tell about nothing that was going on. And Gigi said until you got pregnant. So, we learned that Uncle Creepy Mac strategically used their problems that they were facing, which is the mother with them bad chicks, to infiltrate his way into their lives and eventually prey on her daughter. And the sickening part about this shit was we find out that mama knew what was going on all along. Mama the one told her to recant her story. Mama the one took her to Nashville, probably with Uncle Mac money, to have the abortion. Child. She sold out her own flesh and blood. I, my bull, that, that, child, let me tell you something. 
it ain't enough money made in the U.S. Mint to make me put my children in harm's way or to sell them out. I will go to jail for them bad chicks before I put one of my children's well-being in, in harm's way. I, I just ain't gonna do that. Mm -mm. Well, did you decide on a Saturday she gonna go up to her office on a fishing expedition and she wind up talking to Secretary Darlene asking about that scholarship program that they have. And, um, Based on the information that she sees, she see that one recipient never even did an app. And the secretary said, oh, yeah, that's Vita. That's because we all knew her and we knew her situation. So she didn't have to go through all that. Dar uh, Darlene started getting where Gigi was going with this. And she let her know right then and there. She said, look, let me explain something to you. Lady May don't know nothing about this. Although this is supposedly under her name, she is more or less just the face of it. It's really all of the inside workings of this comes through Mr. McCready, a.k.a. Uncle Creepy Ass Man. So that's how he's playing these people. This also how he's got, uh, set it up to if he ever get caught up, the church go down with him because it's going to look like each one of these victims that he got and they received scholarship, they received them scholarships through uh, Calvary as like a hush type of thing. It's, it's used as, you know, I'm going to give you this here scholarship money and you keep your damn mouth closed. So if ever he's caught, the church go down with him. Ain't that some shit? That motherfucker's smart, but he dumb. Okay. Child, I went out. Mm, mm. Next thing we see Gigi going over to uh, Noah's house now. She going over there with, on the pretense of telling him about the scholarship situation. Now, before he she knocked on that door, he was sitting up in his bed ga uh, gawking at a picture of her. So, he had her on the brain already. So, when she knocked on that door, she like, is Isabella here? He said, no. Nah. Apparently, Isabella has gone to visit her folks. So, she come in and tell uh, Noah what she learned from Darlene about this scholarship program. And then... They begin to reminisce about the past. And it's in that moment that Gigi kind of like opened up a little bit and said she hate her fucking uncle because she feel like he robbed her of a lot of things in life. Not only did he destroy her sister, but she feel like he um, robbed her of her relationship with him because if she had never left, they would still be together. And... She's angry. That's why she won't determine to take his ass down because he took away home. Noah was home. Now she realized she said that. So she gets ready to try to, you know, leave because we still battling the flesh right now, okay? So she get ready to leave, but he ain't trying to hear that shit. Ain't no say no shit to me and run, honey. He wind up pulling her back. He told her, uh-uh, you a big, you a slim, fine woman. Back that ass up. And he, they started kissing and hugging. And Victoria was no secrets at the end of the day. It was their fuck anniversary, okay? That's what the fuck happened right then and there. And I was like, you know what? A, he didn't, she didn't come back here to, I, I didn't do it. You know, I know a lot of people had a problem with that, but I ain't had no problem with Gigi, uh, popping pussy for a real nigga right then. I ain't had no problem with it because she didn't come back to be a preacher that was thrust upon her and she had to flow with it in order for her to be able to take down this corrupt ass pedophile uncle of hers. She didn't come in there saying that the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Now, she may have been a call, but right now, she had no intentions on practicing that. Plus, it was because of all of the shit that she's dealing with now with Uncle Matt that she even left in the first place, causing them to be apart. So, hey, it might have been a sin, but I, I have to tell you, he, uh, he would I seen cast the first stone. I don't got no stone. I, I fall short of the glory of God every goddamn day. So I'm not finna even do that, honey. See, I'm, I just did because I cussed just then. Did you hear? Okay. <sighs> also, I, I tripped on that because if we recall back, Noah and uh, Isabella ain't never had sex. They wait until they get married. She just gives him fellatio up under the covers. Well, Gigi got this same <laughs> Gigi got the full package, baby. And I was like, child, I couldn't get mad about that shit. Because let me tell you something. Let's just be real. What woman wouldn't be kind of turned on by this shit? Child, I love to get thrown up against a motherfucking uh, door. 
up against that wall like that behind some passion. You can't overrule, but you can't fight it sometimes. The flesh is weak, honey. Ain't didn't they tell you the flesh weak? Well, the flesh was weak. It was so weak that it kept her there all night. She woke up the next morning and she decided to get up and do the walk of shame from Noah's place to the big house. And did it not seem like them lawn care workers and them uh, uh, people that was outside was looking at her like, girl, we know what you've been doing. Child, they were looking at her like, oh, Jezebel, we know you. We see you, girl. She get in that house, and that's where the real shame came in, because Lady May sitting there waiting. She said she been up most of the night worrying about a, worrying about uh, Jacob. Gigi said, what's wrong with Jacob? She said, uh, ever since you came back, your dad gives him hell and won't let him back in the pulpit. Gigi said, hold up, wait, stop. Whoa. As I recall, he never even wanted to be in the ministry. He was into baseball, sports of that nature. Lady May said, well, when you decided to leave and you were the one with the calling, he had to step up to help his dad. So this is a business now. And even Gigi said, this ain't no business. This is a calling. Well, not the Lady May. Not the Lady May. Hmm. Child. I told y'all, some will call, some just show up, baby, some just show up. She said uh, he had to join his daddy in the family business, which is ministry. I ain't never no ministry to be no call, no business, but okay. Gigi said that wasn't a business, it's a calling. And Lady May said, since we talking about callings, where you been? Because your car didn't move last night, and you're standing up here looking at me uh, like you done been rolled hard and you're wet. I feel like. Won't them parents, child, won't them parents know it? Mm, mm, mm. I remember my dad sitting in, sitting up in the living room one time after I had left my husband, me and my kids that went to stay to him, and I had them slipped out on one of them. You know how it is, one of them little booty calls. Try to ease back up in that house on my dad. My dad was sitting there looking at me like, bitch, I know you ain't got no panties on. I swear to God, that's how he looked. You know what I'm saying? And I was like, I was just through, child. I was through. Anyway, she said she feeling that she ain't got time to be all with them. She got to get ready for church because, child, it's church in a couple of hours, okay? And I say she and Gigi can give a real good. I bet she can raise the roof if they put her in the pulpit today because if you sitting up thinking that these pastors that we listening to on Sunday ain't done had some old freaky shit going on on Saturday night, Mmm, be not deceived, baby. The devil work is never marked. You got to watch. Bitch, I'm telling you. I had no problem with it. I said, get it, Gigi. Get it and get it good. Because look like he gave it to you good. Now, Sophia upstairs asking questions that I think Oprah knows she admits. Oprah, you got this little girl asking all these questions like, you know, what does concubine and things. That, she breaking down that Bible. And that's what people should do anyway. It ain't nothing wrong. The Bible ain't nothing but an interpretation. It's what you get out of it. And when you confused about something, why, is it, why do Christians get mad when you ask questions like you blasphemy? I'm not blaspheming because I'm asking you a question. I won't know what all this means. I'm trying to understand. You know, and as religious leaders in the church, I don't think they should get mad about it. And she wasn't mad about it. Gigi just still was calm drunk from the night before. She really ain't want to answer them questions because of that. Not because she running, because she look like Gigi will tell it like it is. Anyway, child, they wind up getting uh, going on down to the church. And they see Isabella and Noah. And Isabella speaking like her and Gigi, long lost girlfriends. Hey, girl. Gigi like, hey. <laughs> Noah looked like he won't fuck in the parking lot. I promise you he did. <laughs> he didn't look like he, you know, like he was, hey, y'all. He was like, hey, shit, I'm ready to get back in there. But I ain't mad at him. Anyway, uh, David Nelson actually walks up. Uh, and Gigi, Gigi was surprised because she thought he had done went on over to uh, Delaware. And he said that he changed his mind and he was smiling. And they was about to have an exchange when out of nowhere comes this guy with a gun talking about this is for my brother Kenny Collins and shoots uh, old Paul David on down to the concrete. And Gigi screaming blood all over. Now, Noah did tackle down the, the assailant with the gun. 
Now, she is screaming for somebody to call police, and you don't see nobody trying to make no effort to call no damn police. What you do see is, you see people with their cell phone cameras like they known to do now. They, oh, they going to get that live, uh, you know, right there as it's happening. They, that shit probably was on Facebook Live if it would have been real, child. You never know. You know how they do with these cameras nowadays. And pretty much that's where it went out. Uh, it looked like, I don't really, this man probably going to die. You know what I'm saying? But that's where it cut off it. And I didn't mention Uncle Creepy Mac too much as far as scenes with him because it was none. We, Uncle, Uncle Creepy Mac, remember when Bishop told him you better do something, do something quick? Well, he did. He went up to D.C. And he managed to stop this audit on the church and apparently Bishop Daddy and Lady Mac. So, that's why we didn't talk about him in this season, okay? Now, in this episode, child, he was in D.C. doing something else. Ain't no telling he who he up there freaking to get that done, but he didn't did it. And that brought us to the end of this episode of Greenleaf. I'm sorry my ass was late. I won't do this to y'all again, I promise. I promise I'll do better. It won't come out on no Friday. Now, I ain't going to say it ain't going to come out on Thursday. But it ain't going to come out on no Friday no more. And that's it for me for the week. I wish you all a wonderful, safe weekend. Be good to each other. You know, help somebody if you can help somebody. You know, just unite people. If you can't help somebody, don't hurt them. And that's all I got to say about this shit. In the meantime, in between time, please like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you guys back next week, Tuesday night. Tuesday morning, I'm sorry. I don't want to say Tuesday night. could get somebody in their damn feeling. Child talking about, uh-uh, but that show came on Monday night. I know. I still got some more love and hip-hop to do. I'm going to do it. I'll see y'all Tuesday, Tuesday morning. Peace out.